Hey friends, welcome back to another X-ray critique. This time we're looking at the wrist. And I'll be taking you through four different cases using the Paceman image evaluation criteria. So let's get right into it. Okay, so when we look at a wrist, what are we meant to include? Well, ideally we have the carpal bones right in the center and we include up until the knuckle and about a third of the radius and ulna. Okay, so just a little bit above what it's included here and let's say about a third of the radius and ulna. In this case, it looks like we're looking at a left wrist of an adult um, and let's go through the critique and see what we find. So going through our paceman critique, the first thing is position. So asking ourselves, is there any rotation? Is there any tilt? Um, doesn't look like there's any tilt. Just squinting our eyes, it looks like it's in within the vertical um, aspect of the image. The, is there any rotation? Again, doesn't look like there's any rotation in this case. There's about sort of rough distances look okay. The radius and ulna look like they're in their PA profile. So no rotation, no tilt, and you can see through the joint spaces uh, sort of quite nicely as you would in a PA uh, wrist x-ray. So positioning done and it looks like it's quite good. Now, what about the area? Is there anything cut off um, uh, on this area? Now, first of all, you can tell that ideally we should have the top of the uh, third metacarpophalangeal joint or the third knuckle, or basically all of the knuckles in there. This one, they've sort of cut it off a little bit. Not, I, I mean, not that it's not ideal, but depends on where the region of interest or pain is. If your patient came in just saying, yeah, I have pain just below the wrist area, so AKA these, this area, then cutting a little bit off the top of the knuckle is fine. Okay. The same goes for the thumb as well. Uh, a little bit of the thumb on the side is cut off, but if there's no pain there, then I'm not really complaining in that case. So for ideal circumstances, you can say a little bit of the knuckle, a little bit of the, um, the thumb is cut off, but not too big of a deal, depending on where the injury um, and region of interest is. So borderline on that one. Next is collimation. Okay, so how is the collimation in this case? Well, just looking at it, if the center of your wrist joint should be at the carpal bones, we can see that in this case, it seems like it's including a little bit more of the radius and ulna, potentially because that's just where the pain was, um, I'm assuming in this case. So centering could be improved and therefore the collimation could have been improved as well. That, that is top to bottom uh, speaking, so rather, or like rather distal to uh, proximal. On the side, however, it's quite tight. Um, on the left-hand side over here, there's not there's nothing cut off. But again, on the um, on this right-hand side, we see that the little bit of the thumb is cut off. So, and we see basically on all four corners that sort of silver lining effect, which means that this was the actual collimation that they that they used and not post-processed. So collimation quite tight, but eh, could be improved a little bit depending on where the region of interest is. Next is exposure, okay? Exposure, looking at the KVP and the MAS, okay? So remember from previous videos, KVP is to do with the contrast and MAS is to do with the quantum model. Now, how's the contrast looking? It's actually looking quite good. The way I look at it is, is the bone density significantly or sufficiently different from the actual soft tissue? Okay, in this case, it looks like it is. If anything, I would say it's maybe slightly dark overall, but the contrast levels are definitely sort of there. So pretty good KVP. If anything, because it's a little dark, a little contrasty, you can make the argument that potentially there's a slightly low KVP, um, but it's borderline. In terms of MAS, I would say it's actually quite good. There's hardly any um, quantum model, maybe a little bit in these areas, but a little bit is expected. Noise is one of the fundamental parts of any image. So you're not gonna have an image without any noise. And so in these areas in particular, you can see a little bit of quantum model. However, the bone texture is very nicely um, displayed. So if you sort of look at the radius in this case, we look at the ulna, the bone texture in there, and in particular, the sort of the carpal bones here, they're really well visualized. So no, not sufficient uh, quantum model to say that the MAS is low. So in this case, I would say actually both KVP and MAS is adequate for the reasons that I mentioned. So exposure done, pretty good. The next is marker. So is the marker on the image? Well, in this case, they've used a digital marker um, and they've put it quite close to the um, anatomy in this case because of how small the collimation was. Um, so again, not bad in any sense, but if we had to be ideal, I usually like to put it next to the joint or of interest. In this case, if we're looking at the wrist, my, ide my ideal position would actually be here, right next to the wrist. You see there is this opening over here, 
Okay, it's just natural to the anatomy. That is prime spot of real estate for where your marker should go. Otherwise, it's in it's the correct marker. It's looking at the left wrist and it's you know on the lateral side. So pretty good, but you know could be improved a little bit. Now the next thing is aesthetics. Aesthetics. Okay, how's the aesthetics of this image? Pretty good actually. Um, the only um, thing I would mention is how tight the collimation is, sort of side to side and on the bottom, um, and moving up the centering a little bit more. Exposure was good, there's no rotation or tilt, there's nothing significantly cut off um, or looks out of place. So quite good, maybe slight, slight improvements. And lastly, end for name, uh, no name or identification is seen because of anonymous reasons, um, otherwise what you would expect to see is the patient's name, date of birth, examination date and maybe some additional information such as the hospital of interest um, aka where it was done um, the date of study etc okay so hopefully that made sense in terms of pathology it doesn't look like there's much pathology in this case no fractures that i could see here and there doesn't seem to be any arthritis or anything or dislocations like that so normal image left wrist um, very good in terms of exposure maybe slight improvements in terms of you know collimation and centering but otherwise, if the region of interest was, for example, in the wrist or a little bit below that, then perfectly adequate. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Let's move on to the next case. Okay, so case number two, um, this left one looks like it's almost similar to the previous one, uh, but here we have a PA and a lateral x-ray of the wrist. There's a lot going on here, which you'll see what I mean in a minute, but let's go through the critique. So again, before the critique, if you had to guess sort of what x-ray this would be, this would, you would say it's like the right uh, lateral hand or rather wrist. Okay, and this one looks like it's the left, well, let me write it here, left uh, PA wrist. Okay, so you already kind of see where the issues are. It looks like a left, but this one looks like a right. Get back to that in a second. Anyway, uh, let's go through our paceman criteria. So the P for positioning. How is the position in this case? Well, position is very good for both of them. The PA looks like it's in... Um, okay position, there's no rotation, there's no tilt that I see, joint spaces are adequate, uh, the uh, visualized, particularly the right one, we see the radius in this case, okay, very nicely overlapping the ulna, okay, so uh, very good lateral, um, can see through the joint spaces quite nicely, so position is very well done, okay, very nice. Uh, area, is the area or anything cut off? Again, in both of these cases, it looks like there's almost more than half of the radius and ulna or the forearm included in this case. That I'm assuming there was some reason for that. Maybe the patient's pain or region of interest was actually a little bit lower. So they didn't find the need to cover all the way to the knuckles. But again, if we look at a wrist x-ray, ideally you would have it up there in normal circumstances. So pretty good, but for that reason, potentially some improvements. But again, maybe in this case, the priority was to get all of this area rather than the top of the top of the wrist. Collimation again very similar following on from area. Side to side collimation is very good. I don't necessarily see much of that silver lining apart from up here and a little bit down here so potentially some of it was post-processed. Okay a little, a little bit up here as well. So um, collimation quite tall top to bottom and quite tight uh, on the sides. So for this region of interest, uh, it looks like it was quite good. Um, nothing really cut off except in a significant portion of the thumb in this case, which I'm assuming probably wasn't an area of interest um, for this wrist x-ray. Next, next is exposure. Okay, exposure contrast levels look pretty good um, in both of them. So I would say the KVP is quite good. Um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the quantum model, doesn't seem to be much, maybe apart from these areas, but that's expected because you're going through this portion of the hand, which is a lot of anatomy and thickness. Um, the bone texture seems quite nice, so we see you know a, a nice uh, bone texture in the ulna over here, and nice texture in the radius and so sort of some of the carpal bones there. So really well in terms of well visualized in terms of the uh, bone texture so exposure I would say is actually quite adequate very good next is marker okay so here's where the interesting thing comes in and sort of this links quite nicely with the position okay so we said that um, sin or sin in this case uh, really is referring to 
left so that looks like it's in okay position facing us maybe it's just sort of tilted 90 degrees and this looks like it's the same but it's sort of flipped so it's almost like it was like that okay so it's clear that they've used the left marker but it's unclear which actual anatomy it is okay so if we look at the one on the right this looks like it's a right wrist hand x right um, wrist but they've used the left marker in the ap orientation okay so is the is it the wrong wrist or is the marker just flipped it could be either uh, or the one on the left it looks like it's a left hand but the marker looks like it's been flipped okay so that's interesting because if you flip this to make this marker look like normal then your hand would look like the wrist would look like it's a right wrist so pretty inconsistent inconclusive in this case not really sure which wrist we're actually looking at just because the markers are so inconsistent um, so that is definitely something that needs to be improved um, and potentially something that will probably definitely something that we get sent back for you to clarify which region of interest you actually uh, radiographed so definitely some improvements there and that's the confusion that i was talking about a bit earlier okay the next one is aesthetics Okay. How does the overall image look? Well, apart from the you know markers causing some distractions, and apart from the very long but thin collimation, the positioning is very good, excellent. The exposure is good. There's no rotational tilt. So overall, aesthetics is quite good for all of the uh, all of those reasons. And lastly, name. There's obviously no name or patient identification um, for anonymous reasons. In terms of pathology, I didn't really see any pathology. It looks like a pretty normal um, x-ray. You can see a nice thick cortex over here. So bone texture um, is there. There's no fractures or dislocations that I can see. So from what I can see here, normal x-ray. And uh, I hope that made sense. And I hope that you know the markers were something food for thought for you to think, you know, which x-ray is it actually? Um, and this is something that you will come across um, quite a lot in placement uh, when you go on clinical. Uh, it's definitely happened to me. Uh, it will happen to you at some stage. So pay attention to those markers. All right, that's it for this one. Let's move on to the last case. All righty, case number three, the last one. So what are we looking at here? Well, it looks like we're looking at a left wrist. Okay. Now, hopefully just by looking at it, you can tell that there's something interesting, something not potentially right. Uh, but let's go through the critique and see what that is. First thing is position. How well is it positioned? Well, it looks like, I mean, it's a left PA wrist. Um, apart from potentially some swelling in this area, there doesn't seem to be anything that's causing the wrist to be overly rotated. So I'm happy with the level of rotation. There doesn't seem to be much tilt. It seems to be in the vertical aspect of, of the image. Um, so positioning is quite good. We have from, you know, we have all the anatomy that we want to include, which is sort of area, right? top of the third metacarpophalangeal we've got the carpal bones in the middle and about a third of the uh, distal radius and ulna we of course have the thumb in there as well which has sort of come out a little bit we'll talk about that in a second um, and the sign there's nothing cut off in that case so area quite good it's including everything that we needed to include next is collimation okay following on from that looks like the edge of the image if i had to guess it's very difficult to tell maybe somewhere there um, somewhere there and so it's not cutting anything off the top isn't cutting anything off either potentially was post-process can't see that silver lining effect um, so collimation is quite good in the full way so full way collimation is good nothing cut off and nothing excessively there that it, that it shouldn't be exposure well to me just looking at this it looks like it's really sort of white and dense in this area and sort of dark in this area um, but even sort of looking at one area in particular, there seems to be quite a lot of contrast difference between here and here as well. Okay, And so I would probably say this was taken with a relatively low KVP and also a relatively low MAS. Okay? Just because there's a bunch of quantum model in these areas, Okay, if you were to zoom in these areas. Um, not ideal, so exposure done, but it could be improved in those, in those manners. It is also the case that you just do some post-processing at the end as well, um, you know, because to just really bring up the edges of the skin to be able to see what you're actually looking at on the side. So that could be improved. Then is marker. Okay, so do we see any marker on this one? No, there's no marker, no digital marker that's placed. So immediately that's not, that's not good. If I had to put a marker myself post-processing, I would put my left marker over there next to the joint of interest. 
um, and in the on the lateral side. So a marker done, but that wasn't there. Aesthetics, okay. Aesthetics, can't spell that every time. Um, could be improved. I mean, in terms of positioning and collimation and all that, it's very good, very well done. Exposure, again, could be improved. The thing that you're seeing here is the pathology. Okay, so we'll come back to pathology in this case in a second. Uh, but given the pathology, it's actually sort of positioned in, in, in a relatively good way. And therefore, the aesthetics pathology aside seems to be quite good. Again, the other one was artifacts. I don't really see any artifacts in this case. No rings, no bracelets or anything, any metal artifacts like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, name, obviously not there. No name or identification for none of those reasons. Let's talk about the pathology, okay? So hopefully you notice that there was something a bit abnormal going on sort of in these areas, okay? And also the thumb being in that area. Okay, so the thumb in this case, because it ideally it should be sort of like that in that position, okay, we say it's not dislocated fully, it's partially dislocated, which you would call a subluxation. Okay, so we'd say a subluxation of the um, first uh, phalange, and apart from that, or, or sort of the first metacarpophalangeal joint, okay, so the first metacarpophalangeal joint which is sort of this joint over here and in general you see that there is some arthritis going on in here as well now i've made a separate video on arthritis and oa so uh, definitely check that out separately if you want to know exactly how to identify arthritis on an x-ray but basically what you look for is like three things we have joint space narrowing uh, osteophyte formation and subconjugal sclerosis. Okay, so joint space narrowing, there's a lot of joint space narrowing over here, particularly between the radius and ulna. And you have osteophyte formation, which if you sort of look forward, uh, look closely, we have a sort of one over there. We have a little sort of osteophytes, you know, little extra pieces of bone that's been sort of formed around. And you have subconjugal sclerosis, which is sort of thickening of the bone next to the joint spaces itself. So you can see those here, uh, here, etc. Okay, so we have some uh, subluxation of the first metacarpophalangeal joint and you have some arthritis as well but again check out that video for a more in-depth view on what arthritis looks like on an x-ray okay so hopefully that all made sense we talked about the pathology we talked about how to critique a set of wrist x-rays we looked at a bunch of different ones from PAs um, sort of uh, and, and laterals as well um, and I hope that you are now an expert in critiquing wrist x-rays See you in the next one. All right, that's it for this one. Again, I hope you found it really useful. If you did, give it a like and send it to a friend or colleague because sharing is caring and I know you're a very caring person. And if you haven't seen my other x-ray critique videos, click here to watch those. See you there. Stay curious.